In today's Pro Bike Check, we have an up close look at Tracy Mosley's Trek Remedy 29. The very bike she just won the Andy's Pacifica one. Frame's a 17.5 inch size and it's in that Trek Factory Racing girls baby blue colour, different to the red we saw Tracy ride last year. Up to the cockpit, we've got the Timo signature deity bar called Timo Enduro, and they measure in at 740 with the grips. I think they're 735 mil bars. It's kind of narrow compared to some bars, but it's bite right for Tracy. And actually, the bars are coming uh, for sale in wider soon. So, you know, it's actually sort of pretty close to what I would run. Actually, uh, we've got a 50 mil deity stem as well, keep it nice and short, and this really nice little Garmin Barfly mount to get your computer right in front of you to watch the stats as you're riding. Trek Factory Racing is sponsored by Shimano, so a full Shimano drivetrain and brakes. XTR race brakes with the carbon fibre lever, an 11 speed shifter over here. And what's this? Relatively unusually as well, we've got a front mech on this bike, so it's actually a 2x11 setup. Tracy likes that for the bigger races. Uh, also got this Fox uh, dropper post lever on top, obviously she's got the front shifter underneath. Down to the front of the bike, Tracy's running a 203mm front brake rotor, which is pretty big, sort of downhill size. Uh, Bontrager Line Elite wheels with what looks to me like quite a wide uh, rim on there. Alloy rims, quite a wide looking rim. Uh, Bontrager prototype tyre up front, it's the SE5 2.3. Again, let's measure that, see what it actually comes in at. Looks quite wide to me, but it does say 2.3. I like the look of this tyre, it's quite nice, quite aggressive tread, you know, big tyre up front for a lot of grip. Fox 36 fork up front with this limited edition graphics with a few cool little signatures on there, traces herself. It's actually a 160mm travel fork, normally this bike comes with 150 up front but Tracy's jacked it up. Bigger travel with this Rapid Racers front mud guard as well to keep the mud from flicking up and into her eyes. You can also see this Enduro World Series sticker up on the crown of the fork. Those get placed onto the fork, the frame and the wheels and you have to run those for the whole of the race. Onto the shock, it's a Fox Flotex prototype shock and it's, the bike's actually got this one-off uh, factory linkage on there to make this shock fit this bike. It's 140 mil travel on the rear. Tracy's running this minnow link so that the bike's in its slackest setup, just like we saw on uh, G's downhill bike actually. That will flip around and it will steepen the head angle and bring the BB up a little bit, but that's in the slackest at the moment. The bike is a Boost 148 rear, so slightly wider on the rear. Shimano drivetrain, XTR front and rear mech. Tracy normally runs a DI2 electronic system, and she normally uses that synchro system, just using the right-hand shifter to do all the gears. But Tracy was using this bike for Andy's Pacifico, which is an unsupported race, out in the middle of nowhere sometimes, without any mechanical support, so she thought she'd go for the normal conventional mechanical system, just in case she suffered any problems. Got a Shimano XTR crank set with a 2636 set up on the chain rings, XTR pedals and this nice little E13 lower roller just so you can run a front mech and chain device to keep it nice and tight. The cranks are 170mm long which is kind of short I suppose but with a relatively low bottom bracket and Tracy isn't say the tallest of riders shall we say, uh, that probably suits her perfectly fine. Got a stages crank on the left hand side, that little power meter that measures the torsion in the crank and sends the power reading up to the Garmin up on the handlebars. Got a Bontrager SE3 rear tyre, 2.3 as well on the back, it's much lower profile than the front tyre so a really fast rolling rear tyre on there. Tracy runs about 20-25 psi up front and about 24 to 28 in the rear. XTR 1140 cassette. There's some nice little touches here. See so this bit of tubing around that rear mech cable just to protect it. And on the chains there as well, it's really nice soft protection. We've got a Fox DOS seat post and a Bontrager Ladies Montrose Comp saddle. Very nice looking bike. Some cool little touches I like. The, this mastic tape on the chainstay and also this little Sugru thing on the bottle cage to stop the bottle dropping down and touching onto the shock. Pretty cool, uh, Tracy's partner James actually looks after a bike and obviously has got some attention to detail on there. It's the magic moment Tracy, you're going to wear your bike. First, what do you think it weighs? I have no idea, I think <laughs> it's one of those things people get really wrapped up about is how heavy your bike is or yeah. how light it is hopefully. 
but I think a lot of the time you've got certain components that you, you have to run. Yeah. And I think the Enduro as well, it's always a compromise to me and I want something that's going to last in a race rather yeah. than be light and, and got not work. Kind of big tyres, I suppose, for those, yeah. those reasons. So yeah. let's, let's have a look. Idea. A bite, right? 30, it's changing quite a bit, but I'd say that's around 30, 30 pounds. Sounds good to me. So Tracy, we're checking out your pro bike, it's very nice. Thank you, yeah. Um, things like your stages crank, sends your power up to your computer. Yeah. Do you use that when you're racing? Uh, not in the stages, no, but certainly in the transitions. It's just nice to know, obviously I train with it, so I know what power I sustain through a long training session. So on those liaisons, I can make sure I'm sticking at a level I know I can sustain and don't basically blow up too early in the day. So it's a nice thing to have. What about power? What's your FTP? <laughs> I'm not going to share any of those things. <laughs> Max no, power? No, don't get into too much. It's just a nice tool to have, I think, and you yeah. use it in training. Why not use it in the race? Um, also, gears. You're running a two-by system. Kind of unusual. Do you run that full-time? Yeah, I've always been a bit of an old-fashioned one, I guess, with the gears. And I, I'm a bike rider, and I really want to be able to ride my bike as much as I can. And I hate pushing my bike. So just having that extra gear range, and it also means I can spin on the liaison, so it does get steep. I'm not there grinding away in a massive single ring. So all the time two by for me yeah well, i guess at the start of a stage you're gonna whack it up into your big ring and yeah, yeah pretty much and that's another thing i think for me works that i will always try and stay in that big ring for a stage yeah. sometimes you you know you might get to the point where you're nearly running out of gears but you'll push on that extra bit because i'm not going to change into the granny ring exactly. so i think it actually helps me you know really push on in stages and i think it, it works cool you don't find any problems with having that sort of longer chain and it's slapping around. no i've had very i've had, I've had a few issues where the chain has come off over the, the outer ring but then I've got a front mech, so I'm able to put it back on. So I've never had any issues where I've not been able to get the chain back and it's never cost me, you know, more than a few seconds, so. And like I talked about, you normally run the DI2 system yeah. with just the synchro, so you've got one shifter, does the whole thing yeah, for you. Yeah, it's been good, I think. Again, having having a double and having all this extra stuff on the cockpit's always a pain, so to be able to have the synchro now, still have a double, have one shifter, can put my seat post then below, just makes the whole thing a lot neater and tidier. So yeah, it's a good setup. And you've gone up to a 164 cup front. Do you like that sort of slacker, more aggressive style? Well, that? normally I'm on 150 and I've just used the 160 fork for the steeper kind of rougher races. I had it at, um, in Whistler last year and Samoan, the big you know, French Alpine yeah. st um, stuff. The rest of the time I'm on 150. So I just like to have that option. I think it's more, it's more of a, yeah, just a bit of extra addition to the bike. So running a bottle cage, do you wear a backpack when you're racing enduro? Yeah, always got a backpack because yeah. you never know when you're going to need all the stuff. But I like to be able to have extra bit of water that's not on my back, saves a bit of weight and it's just, you know, easy straight there. A 29, we've seen you use it for a couple of years. Is it all EWS you've raced 29 on? Pretty actually? much since the start. The first year, 2013, that the bike came out and EWS started, I did a couple of races on a 26 Whoa. and a 650 in, in 2013. And that was more because we didn't have the tyre range available yet for 29. Yeah. But since we've had tyres for 29, I've been on this last two years full time. So do you ride a 650B at all? Is it fully I raced Trans Provence last year um, on the 650, but that's the only time I've really ridden it. So no, I'm pretty much sold on uh, on 29, even on my XC bike, trail bike, everything's just 29. Have you ever timed it to see the difference or is it just a feel? You, you think you're It's faster. a feel, yeah, yeah. I've never actually done the timing. It's just a feel for me and if it's working, why change? And if you want to see more videos from GMBN, you can click up there for our top 10 enduro team changes video. And you can click down there for what is enduro. Click in the middle to subscribe to GMBN. And if you like my bike, give me a big thumbs up. Whee!